I remember a conversation with a penitent who uh, was telling me how it was so hard to let go of her anger against a particular person. Well, I said to her, you must offer it to God. And she said, oh, Father, I wish I had something better to offer. And I remembered at that moment a wise word I heard from a nun. Pray as you can, not as you can't. So whether it's anger or joy or helplessness or thanks, whatever is in your heart and mind and soul, offer to God. Anger. The widow in today's gospel was angry but determined. Her prayer, I would say it's a raised fist up to God. All this anger toward this judge, she's holding up in prayer. Now, we know that anger can embitter a person, but this widow finds in her anger the energy to fight injustice. Gestures. We heard in the first reading about Moses with his outstretched arm. This is the same arm, the same staff that he extended over the Red Sea in the Exodus and the waters parted. The power is from God. The story is about the work of God's hand at the Exodus and here in this battle with the Amalekites. Moses is a leader chosen by God. And right here, he's an intercessor. He's standing in the breach. It's more than he can do alone. Again, it's God who brings the victory. But as he stands there with outstretched arm, he has Aaron next to him to help hold up the arm. Like the widow in the story, there's a lesson here. It's about persistence in prayer. A raised fist, an outstretched arm. What's your gesture in prayer? Most of us were taught to kneel. Probably as children, we, we knelt with mom or dad beside our bed and folded our hands, made the sign of the cross. That's a very good start, learning how to pray. Setting aside the soul space, expressing dependence on God, opening, preparing the heart to praise God, ask God's help, to give thanks, and to seek God's guidance. Raise arms, that's a prayer gesture. It's a gesture of joy. It's a gesture of praise. It can be a gesture of surrender to God. And you might even dance in prayer. I did this at the end of a long pilgrimage. I was so tired. But at the end of the pilgrimage, we were so filled with joy. We danced and sang as we waited to go into the shrine. Just recently, we uh, had some dance here at St. Paul's that was very solemn on 9-11. We presented an offering of incense and prayer led by a dancer. Sitting quietly, that can be very good in prayer. Contemplation is not just for monks and nuns. And in fact, this very weekend, uh, about 20 people from our young adult group, the Apostolists, are away on a retreat. It's an introduction to silent retreat. I believe every Christian has room in the heart to just sit quietly with God 
and look to a prayer that is beyond words. Sometimes in prayer, I've laid out flat on the floor. I did it right up there the day I was ordained and the congregation sang the litany of the saints. The priest and the altar servers on Good Friday lay prostrate on that solemn day. You might do that, perhaps, if you're at a time of great need. Prayer has an amazing variety. We were taught formal prayers. Sometimes we just rattle them off. Well, if so, let that be a routine of love. But even better, be attentive. Take time with the prayer. Sometimes when I lose the uh, thread of the prayer, I'll start all over again with the Our Father and try to notice what in the prayer gives me peace or joy, what in the prayer might be a challenge. Many, many people tell me that I just talk to God. If you do that also, listen with the heart. An old timer once told me, I look at God and God somehow looks at me. He would sit quietly in the back of the church every day. There's a prayer called Lexio Divina, divine reading. It's a way to soak yourself in the word of God, to read it aloud two or three or four times and then see which word really speaks to you that day. When I was a young man, I was part of a Catholic Pentecostal prayer meeting. Lively gifts of praise, shouts. The rosary. Many Catholics have this custom. Oh, when I was a kid, I thought this was pretty boring prayer. But later in life, I came to appreciate the rhythm in the prayer, the feel of the beads that can draw us back to the mysteries that we meditate upon. And I found that this is a really good prayer on the subway. Um, there's different levels here, the mystery, the intentions, the words of the prayer. And when the doors open and close and you're distracted, the beads draw you back in to the prayer. And besides that, ah, if there's somebody who's looking over the passengers, they'll see you with these beads and not bother you. Well, that's a good thing too. There's so many ways to pray. There's a real richness in the Catholic tradition. Daily mass for some people, chant and psalm, devotions to saints who are our prayer partners. There's a whole treasury of prayer and I hope you have two or three favorites. Maybe the prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace. I particularly love the old Anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me. Sometimes I pick up on a prayer I find in the scripture. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. That's from our patron, St. Paul. In recent um, decades, the divine mercy prayer has become well known. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. And there's a classic prayer from St. Ignatius called the Sushipe, take, Lord, receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding. And when I worked with uh, university students, many of them picked up on a prayer from Thomas Merton. Lord, I have no idea where I'm going. And he continues to offer as prayer 
with the desire and the belief that the desire to please you, Lord, in fact, pleases you. And there's such a range of emotion in prayer, sorrow, joy, praise, astonishment, anger, trust, fear, doubt, pain. And we share all of that with an all-powerful and compassionate God and with Jesus, a friend. Can't find time for prayer? Well, make an appointment with God. At least you can start your day with the sign of the cross when you put your feet on the floor first thing in the morning. Maybe on your work, on your way to work, uh, there's a church that's open, stop in for just a moment. Many times I keep a um, prayer list pasted to my computer and I'm moved by requests from people. Sometimes I'm moved by something I hear on the news. And for some of these things on the list, I'll keep praying again and again, maybe for someone close in the family who has a chronic ailment. Sometimes the prayer is just for that moment. One thing I've learned though in prayer, I have my prayer list. God has a list for me of things to pray for. So it's good to compare the lists and ask the Holy Spirit to guide our intentions and how we pray and what we pray for. Not motivated to pray? Well, like in any relationship that is important, you know to spend time and to keep on. And remember that wise word, pray as you can, not as you can't. And you can ask for a deeper desire in prayer. When, when I was a, a college student experiencing a revival of faith, well, I had many, many things to read for school, but I would often open the Bible just for a minute to pray, and God was giving me such a thirst for the word that a half hour later, uh, I was still with the word. Prayer is much more than saying the words. And it's much more than, I'll have a good thought for you. In prayer, we give ourselves to God. All that we are and all that we experience, all that we plan and hope, everything. And we pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, you're not alone when you pray. Even when you are by yourself in your room, you are part of the body of Christ. You are in union with all believers. And maybe in particular, asking the intercession of a saint that inspires you. Your prayer, whether it's raised hands or on your knees, a raised fist or folded hands. Whether we feel it or not, it's worth it. We pray because we pray to our God who loves us. And we pray with the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>